This video is going to be my birth story on giving birth at 37 weeks pregnant after an induction. If you're pregnant now you might find this interesting or just a little bit of research at what could happen on an induction. And if you're not pregnant hopefully you'll enjoy just knowing a little bit more about how I gave birth to baby James. James is almost a year old now which is insane and I'm feeling quite nostalgic about my pregnancy and my labour and delivery so I thought this was the perfect opportunity to document, document my my birth story on video. I have done a blog post telling you a little bit more about what happened but I've never talked about it on camera and I think both of them have different feels. I feel like on camera I can just be a little bit more casual and candid and yeah so I hope you guys will enjoy this video. So I'll just give you a quick little recap of my nine months of pregnancy. I had a very smooth pregnancy with no problems at all. Apart from morning sickness I didn't really have that many problems. Definitely no conditions or anything that needed to be monitored. So when it came to my third trimester I started getting a lot of swelling and I literally puffed up like a balloon. Um, my midwife was keeping a close eye on it but she said there were no signs of preeclampsia because my blood pressure was okay, there was no protein in my urine and she said it could just be water retention. As a first time mum and pregnant for the first time I didn't really know what to expect. All I knew was what I had done research on and asked friends and family and going with the advice of my midwife and doctors and they didn't seem to be worried about it. I was having my belly measured every couple of weeks or so on my third trimester and they were keeping an eye on the growth of my baby and that seemed to all be going to plan. They kept plotting his growth on the chart and it was going up and up and up and up. So at 33 weeks I had another measure of my bump. My last scan was at 20 weeks. So one day before I turned 37 weeks I went for my midwife appointment and on that particular day I was feeling a little bit headachey and I you know just wasn't feeling like myself very much. I was still really really puffed up but I thought that was just more water retention. So I took my little urine sample to my midwife's appointment and she was really surprised to see that that time there was protein in my urine which could be a sign of preeclampsia. She did my blood pressure and that time my blood pressure was really high so she was quite alarmed. Then she measured my bump and I was on the same level as I was three weeks ago the last time I had my bump measured. So all of these things together kind of like rung alarm bells for her and she booked me in for a growth scan at the hospital. And she tried not to make me panic but she did say you know you're really puffed up, your blood pressure is high, your bump hasn't grown since the last time that we measured, we want to get you scanned just to make sure that everything is okay but don't panic just yet. So a few minutes later I was on a taxi on the way to the hospital to have my growth scan done and the growth scan detected that my baby hadn't grown since 33 weeks and I was about to turn 37 weeks. So they tried to keep a positive mind and say to me it could be that you have a tiny baby and that's his pattern of growth or it could be that something is preventing your baby from growing inside you and because you're going to be 37 weeks tomorrow we would like to induce you because there's no reason for you to not have your baby as soon as possible. At 37 weeks you're full term and we want to induce you because we'd rather have your baby out and see why he's not growing. So I was very shocked but really calm surprisingly. I just felt like I would rather have baby out like they said than go home and worry myself to death about what could be going on with my baby. And yeah, so it all went very quickly from there. I called my husband and my family. I spoke to the doctor. I said, so when should I come back for my induction? Thinking they would say, well, within three or four days or so. And they said, well, today. And I was literally like that. I said, well, as long as you're prepared, if you've got everything ready, there's no reason why delay. Have you got everything ready? I said, yeah. My hospital bag is packed and everything is ready. I just really need to go home and get everything. And I need my husband to come back from work because he's not anywhere near me at the moment. That was in the morning. So she said to come back at about 5 p.m. and be admitted in order to be induced. So I came home but on my way I stopped in a few shops to buy some tiny baby size clothes because they did say that my baby was measuring really small, just under five pounds and that I should prepare and buy some little clothes for baby. And so I stocked up on tiny baby and early baby and all these like tiny sizes of clothes. Um, 
just you know took everything in because when you're in labor you really don't have time to take everything in but when you know that you're going to be in labor you have that little bit of time to kind of say this is it this is this is happening now and I was kind of glad because it took away a little bit of the stress and a little bit of the anxiety that I would have had. Obviously, I would have liked to have had my baby without ha needing to be induced, but um, in a way, looking at the positive side of it, at least it took away that aspect that for me would have been quite difficult to handle. And so, yeah, we had our last meal as a family of two and we packed our bags, went to the hospital. I got admitted into the uh, kind of like the main ward, not the labor ward yet. And they said that they would induce me a bit later on at night when there was a bed available in the labor ward. The hours just went by and no one was coming to see me. I had a banging headache and I knew that they said that this was quite important that I, w I was induced quickly. So I then chased up with the midwives and they said, look, I've got this headache. Um, I was supposed to be induced at about 5 p.m. It's now nearly 11 o'clock and nothing is happening. I explained all my symptoms to the midwife that was on duty and she said, oh, I'm sorry, I really didn't know that this was the case for you. Let's get you on a bed right now in the labor ward. So that kind of hurried things up because I was there sitting there waiting for ages, wondering whether or not I should say something. Um, but then when I decided to say something, I was really glad I did because they didn't really know everyone's cases just by looking at the person so they offered me some paracetamol I took some paracetamol for my headache uh, and then I got admitted into a little room so at about 3 a.m. my induction started they inserted the propest which is the the little thing that they put up there to start your contractions um, but they said to me because your first time giving birth this might take two or three days uh, we will reassess you in 24 hours if nothing has happened since then we'll give you another drug um, which is stronger but we'll start with propest the midwife assessed me at that point and she said that I was was already one centimeter dilated and my cervix was really soft which was really surprising she said since I hadn't had any labor signs and I only went in for an induction because of, because of a growth scan she then said I'll come and reassess you again a bit later on try to get some sleep the propess wasn't uncomfortable but I did have to keep an eye on it not falling out especially when I went to the toilet or something I just had to always make sure that it was there so I think I managed about four hours sleep which was really good because it kind of gave me the energy to go through what was gonna happen throughout the day. And at about eight o'clock in the morning, my contractions started and they were very, very mild, totally copable and doable. And I thought, well, if this is what labor is like, you know, this is a breeze. I had the little monitor attached to my belly that was measuring baby's heartbeat, my contractions and my heartbeat. And I could see when the contractions were going up because the number would go up on the little monitor. So I'd keep an eye on that and, you know, the feel the tightening feeling of the contraction. And then a couple of hours later, I called the midwife and I said that I thought my propest had fallen out because I felt it coming out when I went to the toilet and I wanted her to make sure that everything was still intact. She said, good news, the propest is still in there and you are three centimeters dilated so we're gonna take the propest out, we don't need it anymore and we're gonna move you to the labor ward because now we're gonna break your waters. After three centimeters, we can break your waters and at that point, my contractions were starting to get a bit more painful and I asked for pain relief and they said they could give me some more paracetamol. So I took another paracetamol. A Couple of hours later, I was still in my room. My contractions were quite regular and getting more and more painful as the time went on, um, but not unmanageable. I just felt like when they were happening, I couldn't really talk through them. I just had to concentrate. I wasn't making any noises. I was just like being really quiet and just holding my stomach whenever I felt a contraction. And it took a little while because I did ask for more pain relief, but they said they couldn't give me anything unless I was moved to the labor ward. Um, and over there I could have some gas and air. So that was between 8 and 12 p.m. So then between 12 and 2.30, I was still contracting quite regularly, only with a couple of paracetamol and I was still th three centimeters dilated. So at about 2.30, I went into my delivery room and they broke my waters in there, which was a very strange feeling. It was almost like bursting a balloon full of water and feeling that balloon being inside you and being completely drained out. It was really strange, um, but 
as soon as that happened, immediately I felt my contractions starting to get much, much, much stronger. And I was like desperately asking for more pain relief and they said it was coming, it was coming, it was coming. That someone needed to come and assess me because my baby's heartbeat was slowing down whenever I had a strong contraction. So they needed to put a monitor on his head before they gave me anything else. So I was on gas and air at that point and I had had my paracetamol tablets. Gas and air helped a little bit at the start, but then I didn't think it was doing anything for me. I didn't feel sick or anything. Thing. I just didn't feel like it was taking any of the edge of the pain. Um, it was. It gave me something to focus on. Every time I felt a contraction coming, I would hold my gas in there and focus on taking like big breaths in and out, and that helped. The breathing helped, but not the gas in there itself. When the contractions were really strong. Um, my contractions were so regular at that point, I literally was having a contraction a minute and then they were lasting for about 30 seconds or so. So I really only had about 30 seconds of relief. But it's a really strange feeling because when you're contracting, you're, you're having like this horrendous pain, but you know it's going to end because you know that it's going to come to that point, the contraction is going to stop and you feel normal, like no pain has been felt ever in your life. And so I wasn't able to talk and then suddenly I would stop and be able to talk normally and naturally, which was really strange. And I kept apologizing for, to people that were in the room with me saying, I'm really sorry, I'm not usually this rude um, when people talk to me. I usually reply, but I'm in so much pain and I know they've seen it all, they've seen everything, but I was probably in such a state that I just felt like really embarrassed that I wasn't being able to talk to people normally. So that was about half an hour's worth of really strong pain from 2.30 to three then I decided I've had enough I'm gonna ask for an epidural I can't cope with this pain anymore if they told me that I'm gonna probably be in labor for another two or three days because I'm a first-time mum I can't cope with this for two or three days so it took the doctors about half an hour to come and see me and at 3 30 uh, the doctor came to assess me to see what the situation was like and at that point the doctor, the examination, I forgot to say, but the examination is more, to me more painful than the contractions itself because they, oh, it, it just really isn't worth describing what it feels like because it was so painful. I don't know if it's like that for everyone. One thing the midwives kept saying was because I was induced, my contractions tended to be a little bit more painful, um, which wasn't very nice. <laughs> but the examination was even more painful than the contractions to me. So the doctor came to examine me at about 3.30. I was contracting every few seconds or so. The contractions were lasting much longer and the intervals were like every few seconds. And the doctor examined me and he said, you're not getting an epidural, you're getting a baby. You're 10 centimeters dilated. You've dilated seven centimeters in the last hour or so, which is incredible. And I just really couldn't believe. But at the same time, I was so angry because I was like, internally angry. I wasn't angry at every, anyone there because it wasn't their fault. But I was just like, I knew that something was happening. That's why I was asking for pain relief so badly. So we're not gonna need the epidural team anymore. And whilst he was getting everybody out of the room, um, I started pushing. And he looked at me and he said, you wanna push, don't you? And I said, yes. <laughs> so it was this overwhelming feeling of, I need to push. I don't want to, I don't know how to, but I'm doing it, it's happening. And I started pushing and they didn't even have the team ready to deliver the baby. That was That's how quickly things moved on. And they had to press the emergency button to get the pediatrician in the room, the other midwives and all the team and all the stuff ready for baby. They really didn't think I was going to start laboring that quickly. And so on my first push after the doctor examined me, baby's head was out. I didn't feel any particular crowning or burning, like people say sometimes they feel these kinds of pain, maybe because my baby was small, um, but you know, it's still a head, <laughs> still a pretty big thing to come through that passage. Um, so yeah, baby's head was out on the first push, and then I had a quick few seconds of panting because the midwife told me, do not push, just pant a little bit. And I just wanted to say to her, are you crazy? Do not push. Do you really think I'm choosing to push? <laughs> so then on my second push, next push after my next contraction after that, I pushed and the body was out. So my labor was really 
two pushes and the baby was out and they put baby on top of me that was at 3 37 p.m at 3 30 the doctor was examining me to tell me that i wasn't going to get an epidural and at 3 37 my baby was out it's so surreal and quick and just unbelievable and so they put my baby on top of me and i was so happy and relieved that he was okay he cried immediately which i liked hearing that cry to know that everything was okay with him i remember just looking at him and everybody cleaning him and me looking and saying is he okay he's so tiny he's so little he was four pounds nine ounces so he was be really really dinky um yeah so then they put him on me we had some skin to skin and immediately we tried to get him to latch on and breastfeed which was kind of like a a very sweet and moment that I will treasure forever that was like our first bond together and it was just incredible I really can't describe it the moment that I pushed him out the pain went away it sounds cliche but it did then I had to deliver the placenta and they asked me if I wanted to push and I just said no way just give me the injection so they gave me the injection the placenta came out and I had two stitches I think and that was it. So he was born and our little family was starting to take shape. We were so happy in our little bubble of happiness and we called all our family, we announced the name that we had chosen for him and it was just such a special moment. I'm really glad that I didn't have any pain relief. It wasn't my choice. If I had had a choice to have it I probably would have ended up with an epidural but because things moved so quickly, I only ended up with gas and air and paracetamol. And I'm really thankful for that because my recovery was so good and so quick. I didn't feel pretty much any pain at all, just discomfort. Um, so I'm really, really glad that that's how things happened. And I'm so glad that my midwife detected the signs of preeclampsia and that I got induced. In the end, they tested me for preeclampsia and they ended up it, with the conclusion that it wasn't preeclampsia but it was just a weird coincidence that all the signs of preeclampsia were there on the day before I gave birth. So who knows what it was, maybe it was a sign that baby James was supposed to be born on that day and it definitely worked out for the best. So I hope you guys enjoyed watching my birth story. If you have any questions about induction or about my labour and delivery, please leave them on the comments below. And if you're not subscribed to my channel already, make sure you do so, so you get notified whenever I upload a new videos. I do a mixture of parenting, beauty, fashion, lifestyle videos. So if you like these kinds of things, then you might enjoy watching my videos. Thank you so much for watching and I'll see you soon. Bye.